Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Um, today I'll be going through the SAT practice one no calculator section. And um, I know this has been solved before a couple times on YouTube, but I felt like most people solve this more for speed rather than actually walking through each question. So I'll be doing that today. Um, so yeah, let's jump straight into it. So question number one x minus 1 over 3 is equal to k k is equal to 3 so it is just x minus 1 over 3 is equal to 3 x is equal to um, 9 minus 1 so you move the minus 1 over there so it is 10 right the answer is b okay question two um like the use of imaginary uh, like of the use of i in it's just put it in there to like throw you off but really this is just a simple addition problem so it is 7 plus negative 8 so it's minus 8 which is equal to minus 1 and 3 i plus 9 i is equal to 12 i so the answer is minus 1 plus 12 i which is a okay so far so good now for question number three, on Saturday afternoon, Armand sent M text messages each hour for five hours. So he sent M text per hour for five hours. And Tyrone sent P messages per hour for four hours. So what is the total number of messages sent by Armand and Tyrone? So the total sent by Armand, who once again sent M text per hour for five hours, hence in total, he must have sent 5M messages, correct? And as for Tyrone, he sent P messages per hour for four hours. So that was plus 4P. Answer is number C. I mean, <laughs> letter C. All right, next one. Kathy is a repair technician. Each week she receives a batch of phones and need repairs. Number four she has left to fix at the end of each day can be estimated as P is equal to 108 minus 23D, where P is the number of phones left and D is the number of days that she has worked that week. What is the meaning of 108 in this equation? So first thing to notice is that um, there's no variable attached to 108, right? It's, it's purely a constant. So, um, what I like to do in this in a question like this is simply um, think of think about not day one, but think about day zero when she hasn't gone to work at all. All right. So if you make D is equal to zero, it is P is equal to 108 minus 23 into zero, which is equal to 108, meaning that on day zero, she has. Uh, 108 phones left to fix meaning that each week she starts with 108 phones to fix so the answer has to be B okay next question um, yeah again it's it's simply just a subtraction question just match the like yeah so it is X square y minus minus x square y right so that becomes a plus so that is simply actually you know what let me just expand this whole thing out is x square y plus x square y um minus 3y square minus 3y squared and then this is minus negative 3y squared right so that becomes plus 3y squared um, plus 5xy squared um, minus positive 3xy squared so that's negative 3xy squared so it is 2x squared y plus 2xy squared. 
which is equal to number C. All right. Pediatrician uses a model to estimate the height of a boy in terms of that between the ages of two to five based on this model. What is the estimated increase in inches of the boy's height each year? So this is what the SAT often does. It adds like additional numbers and and details to like to throw you off basically, right? This is to, to trick you. Like you can ignore this whole part. Um, just purely looking at our model is 3a plus 28.6. We can see that each time uh, like if like when the variable is equal to one, it's three. When a is equal to two, it becomes six. When a is equal to three, it becomes nine, right? So it always increases in an increment of three. So the answer has to be a, just based off this equation. Now you can directly look at it and just see the three, so it has to be that. Okay, now for question number seven. Um, it's, sim it's a simple rearrangement question. Um, and they've tried to make it more complicated by just putting these long expressions. But really, I mean, um, a simple way of looking at it is say we made this, we call this A and we call this B, right? And we want to put everything in terms of P. Well, then it would just be M is equal to A over B P. So then uh, P would simply be M B over A, correct? Um, so yeah, it's, it's as simple as that. We basically just have to put, we simply have to put the num the denominator in the place of the numerator and the current numerator, which is this, has to move to the denominator. So the answer is P is equal to this uh, to B, basically. Yeah. Now for question number eight, A over B is equal to two. What is the value of four B over A? So first let's do the inverse. So B over A is equal to half. Therefore four B over A is equal to four times half, which is equal to two. So answer is C. Next systems of equations. So here we basically have to eliminate one of the variables. So let's eliminate y. I just chose that. So it is 3x plus 4. Y is equal to minus 23. Um, how will we eliminate y? By multiplying this equation, this whole equation, by minus 2. So it is that'll become positive x, right? Because this will become 2x minus 4y is equal to 38. So now it is 5x because we add this, add these two equations together. So it's 5x is equal to, um, what is 38, 23, 15. Yeah, so then x is equal to 3. And so just looking at looking at our options, we see there's only one where X is equal to three. So the answer has to be B. Now for this one, G over four is equal to that. All right, so we just plug it in for, oops. Um, so A four square plus 24. So then it's 16 A plus 24. Oh wait, wait a minute. Okay, yeah, um, you could find the, the answer by expanding this, but um, you see how there's an x square here? So because there's an x square, it doesn't matter whether it's four or negative four, because the answer is still, the outcome is gonna be the same. It's 16 either way, regardless. So they've given us the answer. The answer is A, eight. Yeah, always watch out for that. Like sometimes they, they always have a couple shortcuts that you can use. Um, so yeah, yeah, sneaky one. Okay. All right. Uh, number 11, 
um, yeah, let's just uh, put these two equations together. So it is 2.35 plus 0.25x equals to 1.75 plus 0. Uh, sorry, 0.40x. Okay, subtract 2.35 subtract 1.75 from 2.35 which is what 0.6 is equal to 0.15 x therefore oops that's not higher therefore therefore x is equal to 4 now we plug this into either one of these equations i want to plug it into equation into the first one this one because um 0.25 times 4 is 1 so it's a pretty simple number so then it's just 2.35 plus 1 which is equal to 3.35 hence d is our correct answer okay now for question number 12. so a line in the xy plane passes through the origin and has a slope of 1.7 which of the following points lie on the line lies on the line okay um so here is our xy plane our cartesian plane if you want to smart if you want to sound smart and it passes through the origin all right it passes through the origin now um what does the slope represent the slope represents the rise over the run right the rise oops over the run so in our example the slope is 1 over 7 meaning that it will rise by the value of 1 and it will move horizontally by the value of 7 hence one of the points which this line must pass through has to be 1 over 7 given that it passes through the origin so the answer is B Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, now for this one, we simply just have to simplify this uh, this expression. So we do this by multiplying everything by the common denominator. Now, what is the common denominator of this question? I mean, of this expression, it is this. It is x plus two times x plus three. So if we multiply each component of, uh, of this expression by this over here, what do we get? We get, we get x plus 2 times x plus 3 in the, numerator, in the numerator. And that's because we're simply multiplying this by 1. So it has to be just that. And in the denominator, what we get is, um, just to show you an example, 1 over x plus 2, x plus 2, x plus 3. So in this expression, right, um, it would simply cancel this out. So this would be x plus 3, right? And in this, this in the expression 1 over x plus 3, um, this would cancel cancel out and the value would just be x plus 2 correct so what we're essentially left with is let me change the colors yeah so what we're left with is x plus 3 plus x plus 2 which means uh so yeah let's expand this out so it's um a square plus 2ab plus Oh, wait, no, what am I saying? Oh, uh, yeah, okay, let's expand this out. So it is, uh, oops, x squared plus 5x plus 6 over 2x plus 5. So the answer has to be b. Okay, okay, okay. Now, this is definitely one of the more challenging questions. I think um, like like especially under time pressure I can totally imagine someone um, not being able to do this um, 
but here's what we do for this one all right so you see eight right what eight is what power of two two cubed is eight right so we can simply so first let's simplify this expression so it is two cubed x over 2y so then since this is dividing and we have the same base what this essentially means is it's 2 to 3x minus y which as we know is 2 to the 12th power so the answer is a Now, okay, question number 15. All right, let's just expand this out. So we have a b x squared plus seven a x plus two b x plus 14 is equal to 15 x squared Oops. plus cx plus 14 okay so just looking at this um, question like looking at this um, equation we can see that a times b is equal to 15 how do we know that well because it's the same coefficient of x squared right because the coefficient is x squared we can tell that um, a times b the product has to be 15 so what times what gives a product of 15 and a sum of 8 well the answer is 5 times 3 right so either a can be 5 or 3 and b can either be 5 or 3 as well so first let's just um let's just factor out the x in this so we have plus x 7a plus 2b plus 14 right because you want to know what c is so c in our expression is 7a plus 2b that's what we want to know so first let's put let's assume a is equal to 5 so if a is equal to 5 then x has to be yeah, so if you assume a is equal to 5, b is equal to 3, right? Then it will be 35 plus 6, which is equal to 41. And if you zoom the other way around, it would be 7 times 3, which is 21, plus 10, which is 31. So the answer has to be d. All right, these are the long response questions. Let's get started. Okay, so two square t square, sorry, is equal to four, right? And now we do the square root. So t is equal to square root of four, which is equal to plus minus two. But given that t is greater than zero, it means the answer has to be just positive two. Now for 17. A summer camp counselor wants to find the length x across. Uh, okay, so let's match the values given here. So like the 18,000 feet and all to like the correct um, line segments. So AB is 1800. And EB, where is EB? EB is 1400. Um, BD is 700. And last but not least, CD is equal to 800. And what we also know is that these two angles are equivalent. So in a question like this, right? And, and we need to find what 
eight years essentially. So we know that these two angles, triangles are proportionate because of the uh, intersection and the two angles being equivalent. So because of that, we know that these two angle tri uh, triangles are proportionate. So if we simply, or like, let's call this triangle A, let's call this triangle B. So if we um, were to align triangle A in the same way as triangle B, what we would have essentially is this. Let me just redraw triangle A. Wait, that was a bad drawing. Okay. This, that, that. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I complimented my own drawing there. Uh, so it would be E. Uh, this would be B. And this would be a and so EB would be 1400 BA would be 1800 so yeah so you see how like we have we we want to know what EA is right so in this example if for for triangle and this is triangle A by the way or I'm sorry triangle little a um, so you see how like in triangle B um, the like DC is 800 and B and uh, DB is 700 so you can clearly see how like 700 is pro like is proportionate so wait let me rephrase this DB should be proportionate to side E B in triangle A and D C this one should be proportionate to E A here so because of that we can see how D B is equal to 700 and E B is equal to 1400 so triangle A is simply just 2x of triangle B so it's simply 800 times 2 which is equal to 1600. Okay, uh, moving on to question number 18. Again, this is systems of equations. So it's x, oops, it's x plus y is equal to negative nine. And let's eliminate x in this, this time, all right? So how do we do that? Simply do a subtraction for this one. So x plus 2y is equal to negative 25. Okay. So since we're subtracting, the x's cancel out. Y is basically y plus, sorry, it's y minus 2y, right? So the answer is negative y is equal to 16. Uh, therefore, y is equal to negative 16. We plug this into either one of these equations. Let's plug this into equation 1. So it is x plus minus 16. So it's basically x minus 16 is equal to negative 9. Therefore, x is equal to negative 9 plus 16, which is 7. So x is equal to 7. That's our answer. Moving on to question number 19. Um, this, is, this question is actually a great reminder that you need to memorize your, um, your cosine, sine, tan properties. So recall this. Sine of x is equal to cosine of 90 minus x. This is a known property. Hence, if sine x is equal to 4 or 5, cosine of 90 minus x is also equal to 4 over 5. There we go. And last but not least, question number 20. a is equal to 5, uh, 5 root 2. 2a is root 2x. 
So let's make this 2a. So 2a would be 10 root 2 is equal to square root of 2x. We square square both sides. All right, let me do this in a different color. So, so we square both sides. Um, so then we have 100 times 2, which is equal to 2x. So 200 is equal to 2x. Therefore, x is equal to 100. So guys, I hope um, this made sense and you guys got some insights from it. Um, if this did help you out, please be sure to like and subscribe. I'll be releasing uh, more videos in the coming days doing the calculator section and then I'll move on to SAT practice two three four all the way So yeah, a lot a lot more content coming up and if you're interested, please make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you so much